bloke with a big fat, big fat bloke with a big fat black Range Rover behind me. I just can't park it, it's so big. It's probably covered in parking sensors and CCTV. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> How are you? Another lovely day. Beautiful sunny day. It's going to be the hot week. This is the hot week. What am I doing? I'm driving to Lyme where it's going to be colder. I'm going to miss out on the 29 degrees where I live where it's gorgeous and I've just done the garden and looking forward to a weekend sitting out in it and now I've got I've been invited to Lyme. Mind you, not that these sort of uh, setbacks are of any significance, I've got a choice of two nice things to do. But um, it does remind me a bit in the summer, you know, in the summer you have to almost like make a mental resolution not to go anywhere because Otherwise you don't enjoy the fruits of your labour, do you? You know, you spend money on a nice house and and uh, other people enjoy it when they come. I used to work on a Saturday morning. This is what this sort of got this mental attitude going. I used to, uh, I worked Monday to Friday and then Saturday morning and then all the rallies would arrive on Saturday morning and I would sort of get back about two o'clock, three o'clock and I would be absolutely knackered and in a foul mood because someone who said they can only come on a Saturday hadn't turned up, hadn't bothered to come in because their wife's told them that they got to go shopping instead of going to the dentist and so we've been, we would have been hanging around waiting for someone, you know, the worst patient, the one that was supposed to come in at 12 for crown prep and then by about half 12 you get the situation where you don't know, you don't know what to do, do you shut the shop up and let them come and find that you're shut or do you just keep it open until the last possible minute that they could come and then you leave it open past the last possible minute and then you think oh well I'll perhaps I could do a quick ground prep in the and then and these people the people that don't turn up you can never get in touch with them never you ring them their phone is always off always disconnected always they never answer the phone if they're if they're, if they're due for a dental appointment and they've you know cocked it up or uh, you know, just generally decided that they don't want to come, they just turn the phone off, so there's no point ringing them. We have some, uh, we have slightly more success with SMS messages, funnily enough. Uh, our system does allow us to send an SMS message, and so if um, somebody doesn't turn up, and it's quite rare, but if they don't, then we send them an SMS saying, you know, please, uh, you know, we were expecting you at 10 o'clock, please, uh, can you get in touch, you know, to avoid a failed, to, to, I don't say we say to avoid the failed appointment charge because to be quite honest with you, we don't, um, we don't really um, get any money from failed charges, you know, so we may say, well, why do we bother charging them? Well, the idea is to prevent people from coming back. So, you know, if somebody mucks us about and we then say, oh no, or doesn't turn up for a checkup or something, then we say, well, that's 58 quid uh, on your account. And so they just don't come back, which is, and you have to do it if that's what you want, if you don't want them to come back. Don't do it thinking you're going to get the money, because you won't. You're, it'll just lie on the file as a bad debt, and presumably it's tax deductible as a bad debt. Um, yeah, so, but, uh, the, I mean, we give our, we give people a lot of reminders, you know. I was supposed to be on the radio last Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning and, uh, and a lot of things happened all at the same time. My uh, two daughters came to visit me and brought the three grandchildren, one of whom is brand new. And then we'd sprung this leak in the floor of the surgery so I had to repair the floor of the surgery. So we bought the timber on the Saturday and then spent the Sunday putting the floor down and then I was obviously feeling guilty about not being there while the whole family was at home, you know, the surgery, once again, the surgery sort of uh, breaching my European Human Right Convention requirement for to peacefully enjoy a family life. <laughs> Perhaps I could sue someone for that. But, um, and then on top of it all, there was this radio interview, which was 10 o'clock on a Sunday, and it's not... 
what we've done is we, we do some radio advertising and we've uh, moved our sponsorship over from the weekdays to the weekends because it's a bit cheaper. And also we've done quite a lot of advertising during the week and so we thought we sort of saturated the market for that. Uh, weekend listeners might be slightly different listeners and uh, perhaps more elderly listeners, you know, because what we're advertising is this denture in a day. But anyway, because the advert goes out on a Sunday, they've uh, organised an interview on the Sunday so that I could talk to the Sunday audience. And of course, I completely forgot. So uh, I've done it. I've done it once or twice in the past because I had a regular spot on Radio Kent. And uh, I, you know, it wasn't unheard of for me to f completely forget that I was doing that. And the trouble with Radio Kent is that they will uh, give you like a puff all morning. So. They'll say, oh, like 11 o'clock, we've got the Radio Kent dentist coming in, and then, and then they would be embarrassed because they would have promised to listen to something that they couldn't deliver. So I don't know to a certain extent what uh, what they did on Academy FM, but I mean, I am a sponsor of Academy FM, so hopefully they wouldn't have embarrassed me too much. But I don't know. I'll, I don't know. What can you do? You can't. You know. <laughs> I mean, like it's. I'm fulfilling, fulfilling my obligations to my wife, my family, and putting a new floor down in the surgery at short notice because we had a leak, and uh, and trying to uh, do a radio phone in at the same time. It's just sometimes it's just too much, you know. I'm not going to beat myself up too much about it. But no, the thing we're advertising is a denture in a day, and uh, we did another one yesterday. Very successful. Um, but only possible if you've got if you're co-located with a dental lab. And um, this is an old bugbear of mine. I've constantly said that uh, dentures should be done much much quicker than they are. And gone on about uh, buffering systems. You know how the technicians like to be kept the same amount of busy every day, especially if it's a big lab and there's like a, a boss and two employees or something, and he wants them all to be busy all day. So what they do is they do the work at the sort of speed that means that they've always got uh, one job just finished, one job in progress and one on the shelf ready to go, you know. And the way to do that is to um, just say to people, yeah, it'll take you a week. It'll take us a week to uh, get everything back. That way they've got a long line of work waiting. Um, if they did it instantly, then what would happen is that um, they would there would be days when they wouldn't get much in. And Marcus, who's the technician next to me, he he, can, he tells me even now he's not he doesn't complain, but I mean tells me even now that some days he's not busy, and then other days he'll he'll think he's not busy, and then he'll go around and he'll just pick up a, an absolute ton of of repairs and additions, you know, and he'll have to do all those, and then he'll be working till ten o'clock in the night. This guy, his workflow is very. Uh, erratic but then I said to him oh, my workflow is very erratic you know I mean I had uh, you know there is there like this afternoon I've got nothing booked in that's because we've got a staff shortage but yesterday I did um, I did a surgical extraction of an upper, upper left six roots uh, an apisectomy upper left central and and three uh, bonded crowns on the upper right so which is quite a heavy day for me you know yeah. So, um, so these dentures in a day. The, the idea is we've sort of worked quite hard on this, and the way the way it works is, the patient comes in either at uh, nine or nine thirty because we we think we can do two of these in a day, and uh, we do uh, first impressions. Which because you know you know I mean my first impressions are basically my second impressions, and that's that is not because. The first impression I take needs has, has got to serve as the second impression because it's the only impression. We we keep retaking the impressions until we've got one which is worthy of a second impression. So we you know we get a decent impression out straight straight away. And you know it might sometimes it involves a lot of green stick and moulding of the standard trays and things like that, but grinding of the standard trays. But we get a nice impression out on the basis that you can't make a a decent denture on a rubbish impression so we get a nice impression and then um, the patient hangs around basically for a couple of hours while we uh, do the bite and the try and if it's like a partial upper then um, usually you know if you can record the bite with the first or second impressions then 
you can go straight to try. So an hour later we have a try in back for them. What you have to do is when you book the denture in a day, first of all you have to make sure that the technician's going to be there that day. So that's just a tip for you, okay? And Marcus is, uh, I think he's on the school run Monday, Wednesday and Friday, so we have to do them Tuesdays and Thursdays, or vice versa. Anyway, find out where the, um, find out when the technician's free to do it. Liaise with the technician. Secondly, you have to liaise with the technician regarding the mould and the colour of the teeth, because, you know, although, although on the weekly system you send the dentures off and they always, you know, you don't have to tell, warn them in advance what teeth they're going to need, uh, they've actually got the time to order the teeth in because they come the next day. So on a weekly thing, the the sort of the the fact that they might not have the teeth is completely irrelevant to you as a dentist. Whereas when you go onto the denture in a day, they do not have every colour of every particular size and shape of teeth. So, um, <clears throat> so when you see the patient at the ex initial exam and you say, "Look, I can do a denture in a day," if you like, then. Uh, make sure you do a shade and a mould and if necessary uh, uh, an impression over the top of the existing denture is always good because then you can although you can you can do that at the um, on the day but um, in general I, you know last one I did I took it in advance so that then and you then send that off to the technician and you say look this is pretty much what we're looking for um, what else can I tell you about denture in a day we charge 6.99 and that is for any type of denture. Now, obviously, you can't do chromes in a day, so we're talking about acrylics here. But we're basically, we're talking about any type of acrylic denture. So it could be full upper, it could be full lower, uh, or part, full or part. All the same, six ninety nine flat rate, and and that's actually the the um, the price that we charge to do a denture in four weeks. So if someone says no, I'll just you know I don't, I'll, I'll just have the normal service. Then it's the same cost. So obviously we're trying to encourage people to do this in a day because it's it's done and dusted for us you know it's like uh, we've got the patient comes in pays the money gets the denture and they're off so it's good apparently according to our dentist who works in America they are quite popular in America these denture in a day things so 6.99 and then uh, uh, 13.98 obviously for a pair and we get that before they're fitted that's another little tip um, legally as soon as the denture goes in the patient's mouth it, it, the possession passes from you to them so title as it's called legally or ownership of the denture it then becomes once it's in their mouth it becomes their denture so if they then walk out and say they forgot their wallet you cannot take the denture out of their mouth or ask them to leave the denture behind at that point they it's their denture not yours and you've no you've no right to it and so uh, all you can do then is take them to the small claims court, which they can obviously, you know, it can be very frustrating. I had one patient do that. I fitted a gold crown. It was a lovely gold crown. Uh, and then uh, when we chased him up for payment, he then said uh, there was all sorts of things wrong with it. And so, and there was nothing wrong with it. It was a brilliant gold crown. We took him to the small claims court and the small claims court said that uh, based on this guy's complaints about the, uh, the crown, that he wasn't going to give us our money, that it was obviously been done wrong. We knew it hadn't been done wrong. He was sitting there smiling because he knew it hadn't been done still in his mouth. It wasn't giving him any trouble. Uh, but he managed to convince the magistrate who, and this is again, is if you go to court as a dentist, your, your, your chances are you're going to lose, okay? <laughs> Most of the population, and that includes the legal population, uh, is just sitting around waiting for a chance to get back at a dentist. So uh, don't expect to win much in court if you go along as a dentist. So and so that's how the money works. So uh, what we do is we either we ask them if, if they want to settle up in the morning. We don't say pay. You always say something like sort it out or uh, um, you know do you want to sort sort out the money now or do you want to uh, settle up now or um, you know and don't say oh do you want to pay later because they'll all say oh I'll pay later. <laughs> it's just say do you want to settle up now. And, they, and then let them say, no, can I pay this afternoon? And in which case, then you can say, yeah, that's absolutely no problem at all. Although we will have to ask for the money before you get the denture because legally, as soon as it touches your lips, it's yours. And there's nothing we can, you know, so we have to have the money. Or you can just say, no, I need the money to pay the technician to get it made or whatever, you know. Which you do, you do need the money to pay the technician to get it made. 
not necessarily the day it's made, but you do need it. But I mean, I'm making a big thing about that, but that's really, it's never a problem because obviously these people have had quotes. We, have, we are very transparent about costs. It's even on our website. If you go to the firstimpressions.dental, you'll see all our costs on the website. We've just, we're very open about discussing money. Nobody, it should never be a surprise. Never ever had one patient shocked about the cost. I've had a patient, I've had patients who've had quotes who thought, you know, that perhaps used to paying on the National Health Service who might have been uh, shocked at the cost of private dentistry, but not ever, nobody ever who started treatment was then shocked about what they were eventually asked to pay. That's what the, that's the difference, and that's the big difference. It's one, you know, it's one thing to say, well, uh, private dentistry is expensive, perhaps it's out of my price range, you know, I'll stick with the NHS, whatever, that's fine, I don't mind. I'll go, I'll go even so far as to refer a patient to a, an NHS dentist if they say that that's what they need to do. But, um, but once a patient says, yes, okay, I've read through your quote, I've looked at the pictures, I've, uh, I agree that uh, this is what I want done, then the cost is there and we, we always if we modify the quotation and it's a quotation not an estimate I don't say oh this is roughly what it's going to cost or oh, you know I'm it's a root treatment and we cost we charge like hundred pound for half an hour or something we never do that because the tangibility right the ten, part of tangibility is the patient needs to understand the cost they need to touch the eventual cost they don't want an open-ended arrangement on costs so the, our quotation I think is valid, I forget if it's valid for a month or three months or something, but it's fixed. So basically what we do is we say if we uh, attempt this treatment then that, that is the fixed cost. So um, and also and, and also notice I say attempt it, but not, not I mean, certainly uh, complete it if it's possible to complete it, but you know we, we have had patients in and we, we continue to have patients in who have problems who um, where we're like um, you know how long will this last how long will this crown last how how long will this root treatment last and there's only one answer to that is that you can't even guarantee that you can do the work let alone how long it might work the conditions of use are completely outside your control you're talking about something that they're going to have inside their mouth 24 hours a day seven days a week and is subject to their whim every every kit kat every mars bar every ice cream you know that they stuff down their gob is going to have an adverse effect on your work so the the longevity of your work assuming that it's done to a reasonable standard is actually entirely outside your control so please don't give anybody any any uh, warranties we we have the standard warranty which is that anything that fails within a year you know and it's not obviously down to the patient's negligence so if someone came in and said that lovely crown I, you did for me on my front tooth, I uh, tried to take the top off a beer bowl and unfortunately it's broken. And in which case then we might say, well, unfortunately, uh, never mind, we'll do you another one for another 500 quid or whatever. But but otherwise, if anything fails then, and it very rarely does, you know, I mean, if you're at this level, a year is nothing. I mean, I'm expecting my stuff, my bridges to last 20 years you know and possibly more than that you know I don't even I lose track I lose track we just don't have we don't have people coming back saying their crowns we come have people come in and say other people's crowns have fallen off you know because they've been done on dentator screws or they've been done on posts that are ridiculously thin or ridiculously short or in roots which are infected or fractured or you know <laughs> we have to sort all that dross out but not my posts you know 10 to 12 millimeter para post parallel sided stuck in with GC they they ain't coming out I always say to the patients when I stick a stick a crown in that the next person that's going to see this is the undertaker because no one no one is going to, you know, this is not coming out you know this this your head's going to come off before this comes out and I mean it you know this is this the, this is a degree of engineering anyway I've ram rambling on a bit but I mean basically back to dentist in a day okay dentist in a day if you're going to do a full full denture in a day then you have to have a denture, the, the, the guy has to be located either in the surgery or next, next door. We're very lucky, there's a lot of interest from the dentists around, how are you doing denture in a day, how are you doing denture in a day? And we were like, oh well, you know, no proprietary secret and all that, but there's no secret. I mean anyone can make a denture in a day, it doesn't take, it only takes a day for a technician to make a denture. The, the biggest uh, problem is the buffering problem, with the technicians just refusing to do it in a day. 
and um, because they have to drop everything and uh, the physical transport which is like even assuming that you had a motorcycle outrider on hand all day you'd still be motorcycling the impression to the lab back for the bike back for the to the lab back for the train back to the lab back for the fit and it just doesn't work unless you've got the technician right next door which we're lucky enough to have what I would say though is you know because you've got this luxury you can uh, you, you do need to sort of modify your thinking and and sit stand there together and do the work so for example if you've got a full full let's say you do a bite and then it goes to the technician and he does a try so you put the try in and the bite is not correct now what normally what you do is and what I did do the first time is you do another bite you say you strip the back teeth off do another bite send it to say set it up again Whereas now, with hindsight, in this denture in a day thing, I, what I would do is I would get the technician round and say to him, look, you know, this is the, this is the situation. If I redo the bite, can we stand here together and can you put the teeth back on and then can I try it in the patient again? Uh, because it honestly doesn't take them long. I mean, they get obsessed with, say, all, all the loveliness of the wax finish and everything and you know and what's the patient gonna think and I'm so the patient doesn't care they just if it's just two blobs of wax with some teeth on if the teeth are in the right right place then then fair enough you know just uh, so just um, yeah so work with the technician to the extent where get, get him buy him a lab coat and just get him to stand next to you while um, you're doing it and he doesn't care he's getting a couple of hundred quid for the job in a day so that's you know better than doing 300 repairs isn't it from his point of view so that's dentures in a day all right and if i think of anything else then then you know fine but uh, for those of you who can't do it and i'm sorry but for those of you who have got a lab on premises or thinking about it then then do think about it because it is you know it's reasonably um, it's reasonably good um, good work if you can get it okay nice to talk to you see you tomorrow bye